this works. Okay, so this is number five. Um, we have a trapezoid. So first of all, it's introducing the idea of a trapezoid. So basically, a trapezoid is any quadrilateral with only one pair of parallel sides. So if I just drew those are sides are parallel, and then I can do this. That is a trapezoid. Now that is not the typical trapezoid you're used to seeing. Um, what it's saying here is that at the non-parallel sides, obviously these non-parallel sides, these ones right here, those do not have the same length. But if you have the non-parallel sides do have the same length, then it's isosceles. And that's the typical trapezoid we are used to seeing. So let's draw one of those. So here's our isosceles trapezoid. We have that those uh, sides are equal. We also have that these, these bases are parallel. And we do usually call these the bases. So the bases are the two parallel sides. So if I ever say base, that's what I'm talking about is with the parallel sides. That means also that the bases have different lengths here and here. All right. So now it says make a diagram of an isosceles trapezoid whose sides have lengths 7, 10, 10, and 19. So that would mean 7 would be my top there. My 10 would be my sides that are equal. And 19 is the base. Find the altitude of the trapezoid. Now the altitude is the distance that separates the parallel sides. So that means we could write the altitude in a few different places. We can just do it right here. That would be an altitude. It separates those. As long as it makes a right angle with the bases, then it would be the altitude. But usually we don't draw it there. So let me erase that. We usually want to draw it from this vertice. Maybe there. Why do you think we usually do it that way? It makes a right triangle. It makes a nice right triangle. So how are we going to find the altitude there? How are we going to find that length? If you subtract the 7 from the whole bottom base, then you get 12. And then you divide that by 2 because there's two right triangles on each side. So are you drawing another line, another altitude there? Yeah. So if we draw another altitude here, I agree. Now this doesn't seem to be perfectly a scale, but it's not bad. So if we draw another altitude, I think what Daniel's saying here is that this length here is 7, right? Because they're perpendicular, and it's not necessarily forming a square, but it's definitely forming a rectangle uh, in the middle there. And now what did you do? I'm sorry. And then um, subtract 7 from 19, we get 12, and then divide that by 2 just so you can get... So 19 minus 7 is 12, divide that by 2, and that's given us a 6 on either side. So you're saying that's 6 and that's 6? Okay, I'm okay with that. And now what you do to find the altitude there? It's a special right triangle. Oh, it is a nice special right triangle. So you could use Pythagorean theorem. So 6 squared plus b squared equals 10 squared. But like Daniel said here, if we do that, we're going to get b equals 8. And it is a nice special right triangle, a 6, 8, 10 right triangle. So we have our altitudes here of 8. Now the second question is find the enclosed area. So we're going to need to do some calculations here. How do we want to figure out the enclosed area? Yes? Right, so if you, this is a rectangle in here. If I find the area of that, which is, I'll just use a different color because it's pretty easy to figure that out. We'll go green here. Uh, the, what's the area of, that, of this rectangle right here? 56. 56. It's 8 times 7. So that has an area of 56. And then what would the area of the triangles be? 24. So how did you do that? Perfect, so 8 times 6, by 2, that's 24 here, and 24 here. 
So our enclosed area would be, let's see, that'd be 48 plus 56, which is 104, and that would be square inches. Tom? Nope. Okay, questions on that one? 